What yeah. can we do? So let's get into, like I said, let's unpack this into very specific actions. What can we do other than meditation, which we're going to talk about very shortly with Shamila, to yeah. calm ourselves down and breathing is great, chanting is great, to really get into a calm, relaxed, digest, easy kind of a state of mind. What else can we do? So that would include what can we do to eat? What foods have you found that are recommended for an, a balanced immune system? Yeah, I mean, it, the truth is, and, and, and this, this also comes from a direct, a direct question I asked Dr. Fauci, you know, years ago, back before when he was available to the, the likes of me on the phone, um, you know, what can we eat, Dr. Fauci? And he said, look, we really don't have, there are no magic pill foods right now. Probably you want to keep your red meat down, but you want to have a balanced diet. We just don't have any mechanisms that, that we can, that we can, that we don't have the science to understand the complex molecular mechanisms connecting our microbiome to, uh, to what we eat and, and the immune system. And I know people have things that work for them. He said, go do what works for you, but I think a balanced diet is the best thing. Look, this book. What do you a, call a, a balanced ha- diet? Because you know, I call I call mm-hmm. lean lean meats, uh, fishes, occasional red meat, um, uh, fruits and vegetables. Um, I I think you keep your sugar low because your sh- the sugar is obesogenic, and and diabetes and weight gain are pre-existing conditions. They put a whole bunch of taxes on the immune system that leads it to be imbalanced. Sometimes for reasons we don't understand that the effects are, are, are significant. So this problem with sugar is that it creates, um, or foods that make you obese um, or can lead to it, is that they can really imbalance your immune system. Look, I wanna be clear about something, Rena. This book, I, I'm not saying this for the sake of this book, but this book is, is really about habit. It's not about magic pills. And those habits are eating balanced, Exercise is another thing you can do on a regular basis to bring down that adrenaline cycle. Breathing is huge. Um, I, I want to tell you one thing that doesn't, I, I think talking about it with people helps, but I want to tell you something that I have found counterproductive and I've watched in others that seems counterproductive. And that's the thing where you tell yourself not to be scared. Because mm. um, it goes, often goes like this. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. Oh my God, I'm so not scared. <laughs> and <laughs> you want me to do that face again? Should I do the face and again? I'm frightened. Oh my God, I'm so not scared. Oh, I'm scared. I'm so not scared. Funny. <laughs> um, so, so I, I think, I think things that let your body calm. And, and I know, I know when you're asking that question, you would love a magic pill. I would love a magic pill. But this is really about habit, and this is a moment to start those habits if you're not already. All right. So. Um, exercising, what do you say, 30 minutes a day, 45, an hour, high intensity, low intensity, stroll, what's calming for the immune system? I would think a stroll. It's it's what, so uh, I don't know if, if, did did our conversation about stress get cut off? Did did that make it through about the lion? Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. So I just want to say that's the principle to bear in mind. It's okay. when your body gets calm. I can't answer that for everybody. For Perfect. some, it might be a stroll. For some, yeah. it might be, you know, I, I happen to be a, 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 an avid tennis player, and it takes me a good 60 minutes. But after that, I have a kind of calm euphoria that mm. means I've flushed a lot of toxins out of my body. Regularly, uh, once a day and often twice for five or 10 minutes, I will meditate. And the way I can tell, and it's different for everybody, but I find myself yawning. And when I yawn, I can tell that my sympathetic system is calming down. Mm. And I know I can literally feel that I've taken the edge off my immune system because I know, I know that when it's got, when an adrenaline up, I'm taxing myself. So that's the whole thing about when you feel vigilant and hence you can't sleep and you're yes. super wired and you're yes. on high alert. That's not yes. a good space to be in. So for those of us who are just trying to understand, how do I tell? What's my tell? Versus when I, I'm chilled out. So you're really saying, you're advocating, take the next few weeks and just chill out. Take a hot bath, do a self-massage, sit and meditate, listen to your favorite so, tune. So much. 
I, I can't say enough for, for your individual health and for our collective health, it is based on science. The book has all the science. This is not woo woo hippie stuff. I keep saying it because for a long time, the idea of meditating or breathing or sitting quietly, softening your eyes, you know, going on a run without your device, turning off the TV, you know, people made fun of it. I'm, I grew up in Colorado. There were a lot of uh, catty names, you know, dudes called each other if you did anything like that. Obnoxious <laughs> stuff. But it <laughs> is science. I am begging you. It is science. Read the science. This is, this is not woo-woo stuff. You will feel better and you will be better. Mm, where do you come out on marijuana? I have to ask. Well, look, uh, so, so um, leaving, leaving my own personal, um, I'm not even going to smile in this conversation, but I want to tell you this, as, as journalistically, uh, we do not have good science yet. The reason we don't have good science is because it's a schedule one drug. I would be very, very cautious about the marketing that I read about it. I think people are going to make their own views the way they are going to make around alcohol. I will tell you this around smoking. It's a dangerous time to bring stuff into your lungs. Smoking mm. and vaping really, really compromise your lung tissue. And they also set off imbalance in your lungs. Not a good plan. I just don't think we have enough view of, of, of weed in general. Um, you know, those who rub it on their skin, those who ingest it, um, whatever it might be, I think you've got to make a judicious decision for you, but I wouldn't mm -hmm. believe what I read in the marketing because it's not true. Okay. All right. We've got a question that's come in. Uh, why would only certain people's immune systems overreact and not others? Yeah. yeah. So two, two answers to that great question. One is, remember that we're mostly talking about older folks here. And, and we don't exactly know why, but I can, I can give you a, a reason theory, which is that their immune systems take longer to get up and running to begin with. So when, we're, when we face something novel, it takes time for the factories inside our body that produce the T cells and B cells specific to the disease to get up and running. It may well be that in older folks, when this takes longer to begin with, that the immune system gets really freaked out. It's not working, it's not working, holy cow, holy cow. And there's something in your body called cytokines. It's a word you may start reading about. They're signals that get sent through your body to stimulate the immune system. And you may have heard the term cytokine storm. Yeah. In older folks, maybe you've heard this term, right? The problem with a cytokine storm is it not only sends those immune cells to the damaged area like the lungs, it starts attacking the rest of your major organs. And you may see comments like, we don't know what happens from a doctor, massive organ failure. That's very likely a cytokine storm. It might happen in older people for the reason I said. Here's the second answer to the question, and this is really what's vexed some doctors. That cytokine storm appears to be happening in some younger people, some younger people, and we don't know why. I have had the privilege the last few days to go back and talk to some of the sources in my book. And again, these are like monster thinkers, would-be Nobel Prize winners, people on the short list. And they, one of them said to me at Yale, he said, look, one of the things that I find very vexing about this disease is there's a lottery ticket component to it. And some people just seem to be firing off these cytokines and we don't know why. Interesting. Um, the second half of that question is why are younger people who don't sleep too yeah. well, don't eat very well, are stressed, probably vaping in their part-time or taking performance enhancing exam pills, um, still yep. not seeing the extreme effects that some of the older population are. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'm not sure that's not the case um, with some of these folks, especially when you mention vaping. If you look at the data out of New York, you'll see that half of the people who died um, were under, sorry, uh, what was the number? All, more than half, under 64, but all of them had pre existing conditions. So bear in mind the significance of pre existing conditions in this. And, and the definition of that is, is, uh, is not totally clear to me, but it may involve some of the, the issues you've just described. But, but I think the, the question is nevertheless a fair one. Uh, one of the things I've heard from um, 
from doctors speculating about this because we don't know yet is that the lung capacity over time may just be more robust. Mm. And so what that means is when the, the immune system doesn't overreact because it senses that the lungs are able to process oxygen more ably in younger people. So it may be that you have not only a less balanced or more struggling immune system, but also a less capable lung capacity right. as you age, thereby simulating a greater immune response. Uh, and that is my personal take as well. I think a lot of this in terms of who recovers and who ends up on a ventilator has to do with the health of the lungs. And, uh, yeah. and that's a very complex organ where it just depends. So chemicals, you know, do you, maybe you don't smoke, but maybe you live in a very highly polluted city. Yeah. So and yep. maybe so, you don't have great uh, methylation like me. And so even if you live in a nice place, maybe your body just doesn't methylate very well. And so your lungs have more toxins than others. May I mention something about the lungs briefly? Yes. So it's, 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 they're real, it's really, I think you've really begun to highlight just how delicate the lungs are. So, and, and, and thereby how, how delicate their relationship is with the immune system. So here's the reason. It's the, it's the most exposed organ in the body. When I do this, which I do all the time, I'm immediately inviting everything around me into my lungs. I have to do that because if my lungs don't process oxygen all the time, I die like this, faster than I die for want of air, faster than I die for want of of uh, water and so forth, right? I got to have oxygen. That means there's an exchange going on, that a, a trade-off going on in the lungs. The way that trade-off works is this. There's these delicate sacs in the lungs that really let things in very quickly. And so the immune system has to like make this horrible calculation all the time. I got to let a lot of stuff in, but as soon as I see a problem, man, I'm going to freak out because a lot of stuff gets in here easily. So you can see how like delicate that relationship is between the lung and the immune system and how easy it would be for the immune system to overreact. Matt, thank you so much. This has been very, very enlightening. And it's clearly pointing to the basic truth that we've just got to calm down, chill out, relax, eat normal food. And everything will be fine, you know. Sing that song. Everything's gonna be all right. Everything's gonna be the, all right. So the screen door slams. Mary's dress waves. <laughs> that's my old. That's my old white guy Springsteen thing. Exactly. Exactly. Actually, there's one more question. Then we gotta wrap because we've got Go. our dear Shamila coming. Have they found that once you get it, you don't get it again? So I do know I've seen several reports of people who got it a second time and that there is okay. concern that, it, that people are not building immunity. This, this, there was a couple of different reports uh, outside of the U.S. There was a lady who got it twice. Anything new on you know, that? I, I don't know the answer to it. Um, I will say that um, I, I'm always wary of a little of a, an anecdote here or there. Yeah. Um, I think one of the challenges we face is that good science takes time. I mean, I just want to say one, can I just sign off with one beautiful thought, one thing that struck Please me do. so beautiful? We are back to loving science. The people standing around the president and the vice president and being hailed as our heroes are our scientists. And we have had, we have turned our back on these people in a lot of ways over a lot of time through lack of funding, through questioning good science. They're back, baby. It takes time. Let's put some faith back in these folks. Thank you so much, Matt. Keep up the great work. And uh, you and I will hang out and do another one of these on your book soon. All right. Thank you.